got the many people saw us maybe but do not come so we thought to uh, set it here okay so let's just start what in uh, php7 first of all i introduce about me i am a technical architect at tank systems here only uh, working in uh, php since 2004 and my contact details are there uh, you can uh, get these slides uh, on speakertech.com slash kapesh sharma as you will get it in the last so these are the topics that uh, we are going to discuss uh, so as all of us know php is supposed to be released in october 2015 it is supposed but we can expect it will be released in 2015 so where is php 6 But the current testable version is 5.6, and they are directly jumping to 7. Then there were few other technologies: Hang, HTML, HTML, sorry, uh, JPL. What these were? And again, if uh, you are aware of the technologies, uh, you might have listened PHP NG. So what that was? What was new in that? Then before we jump to the new features of PHP 7. I guess it is important to uh, know what were the major new features in uh, earlier uh, versions, and obviously how it will impact us. Before that, uh, I have a question. What is the current latest PHP version? Five point six. Five point six. To be exact. 5.6.11 as of today. What will be the next version? That we are discussing about that. It is a answer. It is not a big question. I am, but I am more than out here. Any question? Where is PHP 6? So uh, to understand that, uh, let's go to a bit of a bit history of PHP. Uh, so in 1994, uh, Rasmus, that is the original uh, creator of PHP, he wrote some uh, C classes, uh, not classes, C scripts uh, for his personal home page. Uh, so initially he named it personal home page. That's what PHP initiated. Uh, then 97. Uh, G and Andy, they were two developers from Israel. Uh, they pick up the project and uh, they developed it. They also created the company, so the company name come from it only Z and D. So that's how that came into picture. So they write uh, the whole parser and they release it as PHP version three in ninety seven. In uh, and I, uh, they also rename it to. PHP hyper dash P processor. So that is the current full form, uh, recursive full form. Where PHP again stands for the same thing. So in 2004, uh, they introduced uh, PHP 4, but more important, earlier than that, it was uh, uh, dependent on uh, fast CPU and all that. Uh, but they introduced Zend Engine one. So this is the basically the engine which Past PHP uh, steps. On 2004, PHP 5.0 was introduced uh, with Zend Engine. That is 11 years back, more than 11 years. So, going through the cycle, PHP 1, 94, who came in um, probably 95, 97, 3, 2004, 2004, 5, PHP 5. So I don't expect in PHP six should be out somewhere around the uh, 2006 to 2008. So yes, PHP core developers they start discussing about PHP six in 2005. Uh, from 2008, uh, even few books were published in PHP six. But by the 2008, PHP six was not released and it was not even close to be released. The major problem. Unicode support. Uh, they decided uh, PHP six should be having Unicode uh, support. Unicode uh, support means UTF sixteen, 
everywhere internally. All the strings, everything that is saved internally, that should be saved in uh, Unicode. But the problem is that, uh, with that happen, it was taking a lot of work for the core developers. Anything uh, that comes from the database, it is not sure it will be a UTF-16. Anything that comes from the request, HTTP request, or anything that comes uh, outside the PHP environment. They first need to convert it to UTF-16, process it internally, then again convert it to output the encoding and send it. So it was taking a lot of time, a uh, lot of work, but without much gain. So many PHP, core PHP developers, core, by core PHP developers I mean the C developers who write code for PHP. So uh, these core developers, they started working on the PHP 5 branch only. So there were last number of developers and again uh, by that time it was 2008. So in 2008, it, uh, that was the original uh, creator of PHP. He said, we don't need timelines right now. We need some hacking time and to bring some fun back into PHP development. And everyone was waiting for the new version and working on the same thing, same old things. So that was the his famous quote. So in, on 30 June 2009, PHP 5.3 was released. With some of the features of PHP 6 were ported back to 5.3. Meta among them was namespace. Uh, we will discuss how it uh, dramatically changed everything. In 2010, uh, Zen officially declared PHP 6 as dead. It moved from master to branch and that's that was that. So, after it is officially declared that, uh, some other features were quoted back to 5.4 uh, in 2012. So 5.4 was released on 2012, 5.5 in 2013, 5.6 in 2014. 5, uh, PHP 7, it is supposed to be released in October. But if some delay happens, we can expect it by November or maximum December. So, why PHP 7? Why not PHP 6? That is still a question. So, as we discussed in 2008, there were few books published on PHP 6. And as per these books, new features in PHP 6, namespaces, traits that are already released. So, if upcoming version, if we would have called it PHP 6, so new developers, they might have got confused. They might have purchased the book published in 2008 and again there were many blogs and tutorials available so they may end landing on those pages so they could be easily misled. So there was an internal poll uh, in Zen what should be the next PHP version. If you want to go to the poll uh, results, this is the link, you can go to that link. They have given two options. Uh, next one should be PHP 6 or PHP 7. And 58, um, that is community developers. Zen internal developers as well as community developers. Uh, so 58 developers voted, it should be PHP 7. 24 voted, it should be PHP 6. That's how PHP 7 will be the next PHP major version. So now we understand the uh, there is PHP 6. Going forward, anyone know what this page is? Come on, we yeah. Yes. Facebook. So we all know Facebook was initially developed in PHP, and even still a lot of Facebook pages are in PHP. And we all know it is used by millions of the users around the world. So. For the site with such a huge user base, execution time is always important. And again, being a, a scripting language, PHP is always slower for that. Oh, not PHP, exactly, exactly the Zen engine. So in 2008, PHP started, uh, Facebook started uh, working on an internal project known as Hip Hop. 
Um, so hip hop was supposed to replace Grand Indian on their servers. But uh, their main goal was to speed up the execution of KHP. Uh, but that project failed. Uh, so in 2012, uh, in 2010 they started developing HFVM. And in 2012 they released it publicly with a claim HHVM is 3 to 10 times faster than that engine and it consumed half of the men. So that was a uh, big dream of uh, any PHP developer. Half memory as well as 3 to 10 times uh, higher speed. Again, uh, they soon uh, introduced new programming language, Hack. So most important thing about Hack, every valid PHP program was a valid Hack. So they didn't want to completely replace it, they want, just wanted to add new features. So uh, new features like in PHP we don't have return time. Right? In PHP we have time ending only for classes, arrays, but they introduced time ending for primitive data types as well. Then uh, code land, uh, they have new uh, features which write uh, which allow you to write uh, a smaller code. Then collections. PHP still miss the collection support. We have SPL, but with SPL, there are mainly interfaces you need to write your own code. So they introduce collections. I don't know what logo is this. Falcon. Sorry? Falcon. Falcon. Good. What is the speciality about, especially about that? It is easy C compiler. Yes, so using that, they claim Falcon is the fastest PHP framework. Because its internal core code is not written in PHP, it is written as C in C language as PHP extension. So obviously, if a code is written in C, it will obviously run faster than PHP. Again, I don't know uh, about that here. If someone has worked with Falcon, Initially, they developed their code in C language. Um, but later on, they created Zephyr was a separate project. So, actually, Zephyr allowed you to write extensions for PHP. In a, a command that is very similar to PHP, but execution speed that is similar to C. So, it becomes easy for PHP developers to get. Um, much better speed than PHP. Obviously, not as fast as C, but much better than PHP. But commands, all syntax, nearly uh, like C, uh, nearly like PHP. So, so there are all the challenges. Uh, they all come in uh, around 2011, 12, 2013, between 2011 to 13. And again, PHP, uh, last major PHP version was back in 2002. So, committee was not happy with that. Um, they started looking at uh, options and there was a lot of options available. So the new challenge is against the PHP if it wants to survive, obviously. Um, in today's world, if you have to survive, you have to evolve. So new uh, challenges against PHP increase its execution speed. That is something which is important for the stakeholder. Um, we'll have to deploy less servers is uh, less cost. Decrease memory consumption. It is also important uh, for stakeholders, for developers, new features. So internally, uh, among PHP core developers, they started working on a new uh, code branch. They code named it as PHP NG, where NG stands for new generation. So, it has a major goal of to improve the performance and um, efficient memory users. Sorry, uh, there is a confusion because uh, PHP NG was never uh, rolled out in public. So, there was a confusion that it is just in time compiler. No, it was not. Yes, it has goal 
of making pH internal pH code uh, better to refactor that code so that they can support just in time compiler in future. We started. So, we just discussed the uh, uh, PHP 6 and uh, the challenges against, uh, in front of PHP and uh, about an internal PHP branch, PHP and new generation. So, yes, PHP and was never released to the public. But yes, it becomes the base for PHP 7. So when you get PHP 7, you will also get the code that was written for PHP NG. So again, are you prepared to uh, work uh, to know what is new in PHP 7? Because I generally take interviews and uh, interviews are uh, one of my favorite questions which PHP version are you working with? Everyone says PHP 5.3, 4, 5, 6. But when I ask what were the new features in that, 90% uh, of time I get disappointed. So let's go to uh, what was the uh, new work, the features in 5.3 and 5.4. It is especially important because we just discussed uh, some of the PHP 6 features were backported to these two versions. So I guess these things are here. Where is PHP 6? What is HAC, SHPM, Zephyr, what was PHP, NG, BI, Defend. So let's start what, is, what was new in PHP 5.3. Most important was namespaces. Um, that completely changed the way we write our code. And that was uh, one of the major reasons uh, why most of the framework uh, stopped uh, supporting backward compatibility. Closures but another important feature, but there are many small things like uh, late static binding, jump labels, no, no. So let's discuss these two. Uh, these two are uh, more important. Before that, uh, that class names were taken from that, but no matter which uh, framework you work, have you looked uh, names like that? Class names like that. Then valid, underscore validate, underscore db, underscore no record exists. Same like that. So, are they pretty names? To me, it seems ugly names. Um, whenever I have to create a new class, uh, dollar variable equal to new, then a long name. But they are forced to do that. Suppose uh, we have to create a new session. If I go back, I'm speaking about that class. Then all session is uh, store a session. Now this code session equal to new session. Now assuming they have named it only session, and that is such a common name that I can create my own class with session name. Then when I write session equal to new session, with session. Then session or custom class written by me. That was confusing. So to avoid that confusion, uh, they decided uh, we'll have common library path, and after that path, all the folder names should come in the name. So in the library, it's simply written that Zen library within Zen library, auth module within all storage classes within a storage session class. That's for the reason of uh, long names. With that, now if I need to uh, point to my custom class, I will write my custom class name. Or if I need to uh, use Zen class, Zen class name. So with name, it will be clear. Now, this, this will make very clear this session class I am referring to. But that or this one? Obviously, we need to input that first. So, for that, uh, obviously, uh, writing include ones in all the files, that is not easy. So, 
they had something called uh, auto loading for that also it was important to have proper uh, directory structure in the name so what auto loader internally do it break the class name by underscore and within the uh, library folder it will look for zend folder then auth folder then the storage folder then section.php so that was another reason of having such name but with PHP 5.3 namespace came uh, there were uh, new PSR standards for auto loading now same session class in Zen framework 2 that is built up on uh, PHP 5.3 using namespaces that can be written like that simply you define a namespace and simple name so my name is pretty short simple sweet but again it is taking care of all the folder structure now just uh, go through that code just take a minute and uh, look that code is it visible to everyone? What will the output? So that was a new feature in PHP uh, 5.3. You can define your constant outside your class. So we are simply uh, printing constant. So that will be the output. It will simply put constant value, function. It will print function name, but with the name space. Because that function is not tied with the class. So name is this slash function name. And then method within class. Okay, so namespace in itself it was easy. Uh, there were a few new keywords, uh, namespace keyword, where uh, it should be defined uh, before. Uh, as the first line of each file and then simple use keyword so it drastically changed how the applications are structured but this change forced many frameworks to stop efforts of uh, compatibility the biggest example symphony 2 not that much compatible with uh, symphony 1.4 latest version of uh, symphony 1 um, that framework 2 was not uh, backward compatible with uh, then 1.12 then another important thing was anonymous function uh, that definition is taken from PHP manual anonymous functions also known as closers allow the creation of functions which have no specified name so let's write a function without any name. They are most useful as a callback. So if someone of you work with JavaScript, oops, or Node.js, that should be uh, uh, clear. So let's take that example. A simple example. I have created an associative array. Then I have to print. Uh, my favorite fruit is mango, my favorite color is green, my favorite day is obviously Sunday was not uh, So, simple output, that will be the output. A challenge. Can we uh, get the same output without using the for each? We have two array functions, array map and array box. Array map when we don't have a associative array, array walk for associative arrays. So let's do it in uh, using associative array. So I have to display a, uh, define a function in array walk. I will uh, give my array as well as function name. So it will have same output. Its advantage it is faster than for each, but arguably. Not in every cases. If array size grows too long, then for each is faster. Disadvantage: I have one extra function in my code. Even if my code ends after hundred lines, I can call the same function. 
which ideally should not happen. So that is specific for that. Here, anonymous functions come into the picture. I can define a function without name immediately, and as soon as you come out of that code, that function is lost. Now, PHP 5.4. Most important feature that was backported was trades. There are a few other things, but trade was the most important. So, one of the major goals of object oriented programming was to remove code duplication. That is the most important feature. If you have written a code somewhere, that code should not be duplicated anywhere else in the application. But PHP uh, is a single inheritance model. You cannot extend more than one classes. So, if you have similar code in two unrelated classes, unrelated means they are not related to each other in any way. And we have same code in the same uh, both classes. So, there is a refactoring fit for that. You can extract the class. But it do not fit everywhere. Okay? Uh, because what ideally we do, uh, we create a new class. In both classes, we create an object of that class. But creating object is not feasible everywhere. So PHP 5 uh, traits, uh, 5.4 traits was the solution for that. So in general, traits is a mechanism for code reuse in single and inheritance languages such as PHP. A trait is intended to reduce some limitations of single inheritance by enabling developers to reuse set of methods freely in several independent classes. So, just get that example. I have XML file writer, extending file writer, I have a CSV reader, extending file reader. Both are completely different class. One class is responsible for writing something, a completely separate uh, output, XML output. Another class, reading, completely separate uh, thing, CSV, comma separated value. Now, suppose we need to make it, uh, make use of sing, uh, single term pattern here. Is there any way I can remove? Uh, move that code to a single class. Uh, using no. late, late static binding, we can do also. And other ways, uh, late static binding uh, will not work. Yes. Uh, <coughs> just uh, you create the object in one uh, first class, then you can write the new I mean, XML writer. Instead of XML writer, you can write yes, the static. These are different classes. They are extending different classes, not the same class. Okay. That's the problem. That's why said the two unrelated classes. Huh. Okay. If they are common ancestor, then it is easy. We can move the code to the common ancestor. But they don't have common ancestor. So in PHP 5.3, there was no solution. You have to duplicate that code. But in PHP 5.4, We can do that. We can define a trait, single term, and in both the classes, simply use single term. And for the code, you can uh, stay at compiler level, for that code will be copy pasted here. So my logic is at single place, but it is behaving like it is written on both the places. So that was the best uh, use of traits. Then 5.5, there was most important thing was password hashing API. There are a few other things, generator, finally keyword, in try catch block, you can append that. Um, then in for each, you can have the list. Right? But there was another thing. Now password hashing. How do we hash our password? Generally, MD5 password. Is it secure? There are a lot of online databases where you will give the hash, they will give you the password. A solution, we can add a sort. But is it secure? Not 
Its algorithm is secure, we cannot break it, but the problem with that is that it is too fast. So if someone gets the access of your database, he can apply a brute force attack. Uh, if you don't understand brute force attack, I will give a password here, within a loop, I will say, match it with A, match it with B, match it with C, D, then A, 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 B, A, C. Uh, and within a day, the password should be broken. So, its biggest disadvantage is it is too fast. That it allows brute force attack. Uh, and we don't want that. So, actually, speed is not good everywhere. That is the perfect example where we don't want the speed. We want it to be slow. So, PHP 5.5k uh, with password hashing uh, API. Very simple function. Just give a password uh, for password has function. It will return you hash password. In the background, it will use bgrid algorithm that is currently only supported in default. In future, it can uh, support few more algorithms. So you can simply go and change that. In future, currently it is only bgrid. Now you have to verify that. Again, another function, password verify. Uh, send the original password entered by user and the hash you got from there. So simple two lines and all the complexity is handled by PHP in a very secure manner. Even that was uh, so important that uh, it was backported to PHP 5.3. So now even now PHP 5.4 is about to uh, reach end of life. So, on the production servers, we should use only PHP 5.5, but still, if someone has PHP 5.3 or 4, you can backport it. PHP 5.6, constant expression. So, while defining the constant till 5.5, you must have exact value, but now. You can give an expression. Main thing was triple dot operator. But again, uh, there were a lot of minor things. PHP 5.7. Have you heard about that? It was internally discussed that we should release 5.7. Um, so, major goal was that uh, of 5.7 was to prepare users for PHP 7. So, actually, PHP 7 is going to remove all the deprecated uh, things in PHP 5.x. If it is deprecated in PHP 5, it will be removed in PHP 7. So, purpose of that was a proposal. Let's uh, release 5.7 so that user can prepare themselves to move to 5, uh, PHP 7. But that proposal was uh, go down in voting. Uh, so there was no PHP 5.7. Okay, so for the stakeholders, what PHP uh, 7 is uh, getting? It will get 100% performance gain. Just by installing PHP 7, if your code can compile with PHP 7, your execution speed will be doubled. Just by installing it. Minimum double, it could be more. And it will have efficient memory usage. So, whatever the amount of uh, memory it is taking right now, less the memory will be used. Important, um, I can support more users on my same server. And that's a huge advantage for the stakeholder. For developers, there are many new features. They are time ending from primitive card type. You can now define return types. There is a new operator, the spaceship operator. We just discussed anonymous functions. Now you can have anonymous classes. That will be mainly important while writing your PHP unit test cases. If you write that, um, you must have uh, gone through a complex API for mocking the objects. So now you can. Uh, Create anonymous class immediately. Then uh, there is a 
double question mark operator. Now, in the PHP 5.x, if we get a fatal error, we cannot recover it. So, PHP 7 is coming with a new exception uh, uh, hierarchy where all the errors can be cached, even if it is a fatal error. They added few new key reserve keywords. So, let's go with it. Typing. A simple example, very simple. Um, I add function which simply add two numbers. Now, if I want, it should be an integer. We can actually do that. If it is not an integer, throw an exception. If it is an integer, add them. Then simply calling two and three, it should return expected result. But adding two and any string, what should return? What will be the output of that? Exactly. So it will internally type cast it and make it zero. With typing, but again, is that my expected result? This is not working. Right? Because Internally uh, type cast it to integers. The same example in 5.7 will be you can define it here. Integer number one, integer number two. It will work as expected. Two plus three is five. But for that, we'll get error. Fatal error, uncaught type error. Argument two passed must be of type integer is string given. If you define it integer, no other validation needed, it has to be integer. And we can also define the return types. After the function name, call it return type. So, same example, I have defined a uh, return type, but Instead of uh, adding the number, I am returning a string. What will the output? Unwatch type error, same thing. Return value must be of type integer, string return. So, you can enforce the validation by parameter type and return type. No more uh, is a, is a string, no more such things needed. There is a new operator, a spaceship operator. So just consider that code. I have to compare two numbers. If A is greater than uh, less than B, I have to return minus 1. If it is greater, I have to return 1. If it is equal, I have to return 0. So 2 and 5, it will return minus 1, it will return 0, it will return 1. PHP 7 is coming with a new operator, spaceship operator. So this code is exactly equivalent to that code. So there are three operators, less than, equal to, greater than. If first operator meet, it will return minus 1. Second operator meet, it will return 0. Third operator meet, it will return 1. So, Anonymous class. So, I'm just uh, doing wider because uh, its real use case can be done in PHP unit when you have to mock something and that code is a little too big to fix here. I simply wired out it. I have created a new class immediately, no name of the class because it's an anonymous class. It will output object. Now, in place of class name, no class name, it contains integer i property with value 3, which was passed from here. Okay, that's uh, very difficult for now to uh, decide where it can be used. 
practically, but two use cases. If you have to implement an interface for some dependency injection, it can be used there as well as for the mocking. How many of you use PHP right? with uh, mocking API? So there it will be very useful. Uh, you no longer need to mock everything, just create a new anonymous class and pass it. Then, double question mark operator. It is something uh, equivalent to uh, in Okay, uh, is, uh, this thing. If it is that, it will return A. If it is not that, it will return B. No. But again, there will be some problems. If I do it null, question question null, or no, it will return none. Because null is not really a something set. If something is null, it will return second. But in case of false, false is a value. But there could be true and false. So it will return false. So a new operator coming with uh, some special use cases. Now accept uh, fat errors. In PHP 5, if something error occurs, fatal accept can happen. We have nearly no control to handle it. It will be displayed on the UI logger. But now there are new um, that whole directory structure, our exceptions are still there, but there is new error class, which is again implementing forever, and it has all the uh, new error classes, type error, path errors, division by zero error. So earlier they all were any error that was lying in the e underscore error or e underscore recoverable error. They will be thrown. Uh, so as a exception or as an error exception, so we can handle it programmatically. Now there are few reserve keywords. So obviously uh, we are going for primitive uh, type empty. So all these primitive types are now reserved keywords. We cannot use them as a class name or function name. And there are a few more resources, object, scalar. Uh, makes numeric, although not used, but they reserve it for the future. Now, the point. PHP 7 is not officially released till now. If you want to test it, you have to compile it. And compiling it on uh, Linux is really easy. So, you can either have your background box. I personally use the uh, Homestead to compile it. So just create a PHP 7 directory, get a clone from PHP source code, that is the URL. After that, in the directory, I have to call uh, build con, it will type the configuration and configure with all these options to really compile it. This is a long time taking it. T around 7 minutes to compile the whole PHP and again initially you will get lot of errors this library not installed, this library not installed so whatever library not installed you will uh, simply need to install that library you will need GCC which uh, by default is installed on Ubuntu but if not installed you have to install that as well but PHP is developed in C so after that compilation, you can use PHP 7. I compiled it on uh, uh, Vagrant using Homestead. And I also able to compile it on uh, uh, Cloud ID uh, on uh, coding. You can go and check coding.com. They provide uh, free accounts. I was able to, uh, on, on Cloud 9, I was not able on free account. So you can set it there. These are all the things you need to do. Although it will take 
yung minimum ba na. So, that's all from my side. Any questions? <laughs>